Yes, morning. So we are here now, Kamaris, bathing one of the goats. Um, this is a boar ram that I have here, but he's... Um, because I'm feeding the animals with mangoes now, some of the goats are very, very messy. So Kimar said he's going to wash this goat for us today because I wanted to show, show this goat and we're going to have a discussion about the boar goat. It's like he likes it. Yeah, he likes it. Eh? He looks like him having fun, Kamar. Yes, he likes the bath. He likes the bath. Yeah. Need bath. <laughs> <laughs> Really bad. But come on, you be the goat them all the time? Yeah. Eh? Yeah. I've been dirty. That's something I never do yet. I had a big bath where so put them in and just give them a bath. The goat don't like water? No. But he, he's enjoying Yeah, man, he's having fun. He looks like him. Love it. He <laughs> looks pretty since you're bathing it. <laughs> really look nice. Look at belly, it's stiff. Bring, bring the boar come, the, the new gun come. Because him look fairly clean, right? The only time you worry about water and these things you know, uh, is if you're up at Stony Hillside or in the wet regions in St. Anne. Uh, you see, once you have this sun, yeah. sanitizer, greater sanitizer. You don't have to worry about that. Morning, morning. This morning I'm here, I come to look at some boats and we're going to have a discussion. We're going to look at two rams and have a discussion whether they are, they are purebred boar or purebred mule. We want to have a look at these animals and we're going to assess them and see if it is possible to look at an animal and tell whether they are purebred or not. And I mean, you can look at a, say for example, a purebred boar and make an assessment whether this is a purebred boar or not. Or a Nubian animal, whether you can look at a purebred Nubian or not and tell if this is a purebred animal. So let us take a look at these animals. So, this goat as you know, I've been feeding mangoes. Yeah, I have bags and bags of mangoes in my back there. And I always feed in the animals with uh, mangoes. So he was very messy, had a lot of mango spots all over him. So, Mr. Kemar here, looking after the animals for me, he decided to bathe him. I was very surprised, you know, the animals stand up and, you know, allowed us to just bathe him like he was really enjoying the bath. So now he's out in the sun and drying up. So come on, come and let us have a look at the animal and, and look at it. So when we look at this animal, um, he's now wet. So don't mind the fact that he's wet now, but Kamar is holding him and posing with him. Much like how you would pose with an animal at then the show ground. And when we are looking at these animals, is this animal a purebred boar or not? One of the things is that I bought this ram as a purebred boar. Right, and he's supposed to be a purebred boar. But can you look at this animal and tell? Kemar, what is your opinion? Can you look at him and tell if he's a purebred or not? Yes, I would say he's a um, he's a purebred boar. 
based on his features, his um, characteristics. He has the characteristics of a boram. He has um, a nice back end, a straight, um, a nice straight back. So he has the characteristics of a boram. He has very nice balls. His yes, balls look. He has a nice, a nice balls. He has a nice stance. Yes. So uh, yes, he he's a purebred boar. Now, one of the things is that when we are here standing up looking at this ram, he has all the characteristics of a purebred. Yes, sir. It looks like a purebred ram. But people, I want to tell you this: there is this possibility that he could not be a purebred. Sometimes animals they'll breed them up. He might be a third generation, maybe even fourth generation, and he might just not be a purebred. So what I'm trying to show you is that you can't necessarily just go and look at an animal or somebody just look at him and tell that that animal is a purebred boar. You, you, you have to know the farmer you're buying the animals from. You have to see the genetics. You have to see if this buck is pure. Look at the bloodline. Look where he's coming from. Who is his grandparents, his father's, mother's, great-grandparents? You have to look at all of those things to really know. Sometimes just looking at this animal alone is not enough. This ram has a lot of the characteristics. One of the things is that the brown color, sometimes they want a more richer, yes, a more deeper red. That, that is the only doubt I have. You want a deeper red in, in, in the color. But sometimes these boars even come with lighter colors than this. You'd want a deep. He has a nice chest. His legs look okay. And he's in good condition. You know, he's in, in very, very good condition. I mean, if you look at him, he's still wet as we are looking at him here now. But he's in fairly good condition. So, the question is, is this a purebred or not? I want people to know that you really, really can't 100% tell if you are buying a purebred animal or not. You simply don't know. And remember, the difference between a purebred and a crossbreed. I mean, maybe you could buy a purebred like this for 100,000, maybe 120,000. But if this is a graded ram, then you're probably looking at maybe $60,000. Yes. That is the difference of what can happen in the pricing when you are buying animals. So young farmers and inexperienced farmers, it is, it is a very risky thing to go and buy animals that are purebred if you don't have the experience and know what you are doing and knowing how to look at an animal and tell what they are. I wanted to also point out something else right here. If you notice, his horn is bruised right here. These boars sometimes fight very aggressively and they buck a lot. And sometimes the horn get infected right here. Sometimes you don't see it. You might lift up the hair and look under the hair right here. And you might see maggot inside it. Sometimes they buck. When they're fighting, the horn actually break inside here. And you might not notice it. And sometimes flies take inside of the, the horn. And you have to pay attention to it. So I'm just looking here. You can see he probably was fighting or rubbing it on the fence or something. And it gets exposed. And it's possible for a fly strike to happen here. You have to look out for that with these animals. You have to observe your animals very, very carefully. Look at everything and inspect them very regularly. You have to just, while they're going out to pasture or while you're feeding them, you have to make sure that you observe your animals and pay close attention to everything. Right now, I can look at the woof of these animals. If, if, if Kamara lift up the foot, you can see that the woofs need to cut. I don't know how Kamara have him looking like this. But if you see this, these woofs need to trim. You mustn't leave it. You can see this overlap. This animal really, you know, the, the skin will grow over like this. Fungus and bacteria will come underneath this. When you look between the toes, sometimes it will get sore in between there. And you have to treat it because bacteria will come between it and, and cause it to sore. So you must make sure, boar goats especially, these wolves go very, very fast on the boar goat. And sometimes maybe every month or every two months. You come here? Yes, sir, every so month. Every month you have to trim these wolves on the boar goat. They, are, they, they require a lot of maintenance. That's one thing with them. And you really have to put a lot of good protein on them, especially bag feeding, to really get the full potential of a boar goat. It really is a lot of work to take care of them and you have to pay attention to that. So let us take a look at a Nubian now. So 
This is one of the Nubian rams that I have here on the bird. Now, I want you to just see how the mango, feeding them on the mango and how it's staying up everything on them. So this is what Kamara just bait, bait the boar a while ago. But with this black Nubian, you probably won't see, you know, see the mango stains. But as you can see, this Nubian is in good condition. Now, one of the things when you're looking at a Nubian, you always look, the Roman is really, this, this, the Roman here is what you really look out for. You always have this nice Roman on the animals. Ears is also another thing. People love to see long ears in Jamaica. So this, these Nubians have very long ears. Their ears is always long and pointed down. This young ram here is probably about a year old. And if you look at him, his length, his coloration. So the two things you look for on a Nubian ram is usually this long ears. The ears must not be sticking out. When they are crossbreed, sometimes you see the ears come this way and then it's a little down. And he's able to stand up his ears sometimes. With the purebred union, come on, you don't usually see. No. You, you, you usually don't see a newborn being able to lift up his ears like this. That's usually one of the telltale signs of being a purebred or not. And also this Roman. Otherwise, looking at the animal, it's very difficult. No. The Nubian usually stand up very tall, always have long legs and have, you know, a body looking like this. <coughs> if you look at the rear, he's actually giving us a pose here for us now. He has very nice testicles. <coughs> Whenever you look at the testicles, it must not have a split going all the way up. There's a, a small amount of split at the te testicles, it's allowed, but it must not have a deep split because the split in the ram affects the females because they'll have a partition going up inside the other which is not good because they will not be able to store a lot of milk if you have a big split in the middle of the breast so you must not have a deep split inside the mother goat breast and a split in the balls will throw that in the in the in the, in the herd and throw it in the females so the question is is this ram a purebred nubian or not the truth is, I know that this animal is a purebred Nubian. But if I went to somebody farm, come on, can you tell if this ram is 100% a purebred Nubian? No, you can't tell. You will not be able to tell if this is a purebred or not. He could be three quarter, he could be seven eighths. You know, you don't really know. But you can look at it and say, wow, this ram has a lot of Nubian traits. He look like he's a nice animal. And he look like maybe a nice ram to put on the herd. He has a nice back end. Another thing, the Nubians don't have a huge back end like the boar. And if you look at the front of the animal, the Nubian is not usually as wide as the boar. But this, this ram has a nice front end of a, of a, for, for a Nubian. So he's not, he's not looking bad at all. Um, as you can see, Kamar, the whoops needs to cut. See? See the overlap in here? It's very, very bad. These whoops need to be cut very badly. And another thing, the Nubians, they come in all different colors. They come in brown, black. Spotted, you know, white, cream, all kind of camouflage color. They, they are multicolored animals, not like the boar. The boar is brown head and white body. They come in all different colors. So what I wanted to you to see is that when you're going to buy, I get a lot of calls about people wanting me to advise them whether to buy, where can they find purebred boar and purebred Nubians to buy. It's hard for me to give advice like that because I really don't know. You have to have trust in the farm that you're going to purchase from and get somebody who have experience that can look at the animal and tell whether this is a good buy or not or whether this looks like a purebred or not when you're buying these animals. So this is what I wanted to bring to you. 
cannot just tell whether the animals are purebred or not sometimes just by looking at it you can tell if they are close but you can't tell for purebred um you know it was good to bring this to you i wanted you to see i get a lot of questions being asked a while ago about purebred nubian purebred you know all the different questions and i wanted you to get the understanding of what to look for and what the pros and cons are thanks for continuing watching my channel and um, please subscribe and continue watching thumbs up so when i was explaining about the when i was explaining about the the, the, the testicles if you look at this split look on how this split this deep split inside of this female this is also thrown from the ram the deeper the split is in the in the in the testicles of the ram the kids that born going have this deep split what's the disadvantage of a deep split this other will not be able to hold a lot of milk so it's better when it comes straight across like this you want this other to hold maximum amount of milk to feed the kids So now we're going to take a look at this ram. He is a purebred alpine ram. So these alpines also come in different coloration, right? Now one of the signature of the alpine is this long horn. This ram is probably a year old. Very long horn. And as you know, the alpine is a milking breed. Provide, they really produce a lot of milk. He's a purebred alpine. Now, if you look around Jamaica, I have seen rams looking like this all over Jamaica. Now, anybody could probably sell you a ram and tell it's a purebred alpine, but I am very, very, you know, very sure that there are almost no purebred alpine in Jamaica like that. Very, very few. So, I got this purebred alpine. Now, what I like about him is the milk, the milk that they will produce. So, one of the things that I'm doing with this purebred alpine, I'm putting him on some of my graded and some of my native goat because it will cause them to produce more milk. Especially animals, the smaller animals, like some native who is not producing a lot of milk. I use this animal on those doors so that the kids will have a lot of milk. And also, their growth rate will be very fast. They usually, the alpine always produce some very fast growing kids when you cross them with the native. Now, if you look at this animal, he looks just like probably a native, or you see animals all over the place looking just like this. But are they purebred alpine? No, more than likely they are not. Very few are out there, if any at all. I probably only know two farms that have a purebred alpine on them. I don't know anybody else that have that. But it's a useful animal because of the milk production. And if you look at him, he has a nice testicles around here. And they don't grow as fast, but they are very, very, very good milkers. And they are very hardy animals. These animals are survivors. They are very, very strong and very, very hardy animals. They live in harsh conditions. They can climb trees. They will climb the mountain. They can go anywhere. Very tough. So his, his horn and his face, the alpine has this facial expression. They have a lot of personality. That's one of the things with these alpine, a lot of personality. And very aggressive breeders. Very, very aggressive. These rams will probably get a hundred years pregnant in no, a hundred um, goats, goats, females, in, in no time. They are so such aggressive breeders.
Thank you.